This time on Animal Airport, animal health inspectors Deborah and Sharon are tracing a batch of puppies brought into the UK illegally. I would have rather been anywhere than in that house having to do what I've just done. It's feeding time for the Ark's most slippery customers, and Stuart's not taking any chances. Typical rock python, nasty as anything, and I literally just chuck the food in because um, I don't really want to get bitten by it. And there's big trouble when a grumpy dog in an oversized crate flies in. It's a small horse. With nearly half a million flights a year, Heathrow is the busiest international airport in the world. As well as 65 million human passengers, each year around 40 million animals passing through the airport check in at the Animal Reception Centre, affectionately known as the ARC. Animal health officer Gemma is on her way to Terminal 3 to collect an unusual cargo. We are just off to an Air Canada flight to pick up a couple of parrots that are going on a, another flight later this afternoon. Birds aren't as common as cats and dogs, but you do get the odd one or two every now and again come through on a pet bird licence. The two African grey parrots have flown nearly 5,000 miles over the Atlantic Ocean. As they can be easily stressed, their travel boxes come complete with curtains. They won't be unveiled until they're back at the Ark. Some of the Ark staff are regularly called away from Heathrow. Tracking down animals that have been brought in illegally is just one of the jobs of animal health inspectors Deborah and Sharon. As officers for the London boroughs, they spend a lot of their time in the capital. We're on a puppy roundup. Um, we've been doing this for a couple of days now. There's um, 17 puppies that have been brought into the UK in one consignment that don't meet the import regulations. And we're having to detain them for the next 21 days and have them revaccinated in quarantine. The advice when you buy a puppy is to see the parents if you possibly can. Um, and I think this highlights why that's important. The puppies have been sold by a pet shop which brought them in illegally from Eastern Europe. Without the necessary vaccinations, there's a risk they could be carrying rabies. This is a very serious viral infection spread by animals to humans. It affects the brain and nervous system and is fatal if not treated quickly with a vaccine. So it's vitally important that Deborah and Sharon oversee the operation to find all 17 dogs and ensure they get their necessary jabs. The plan is to try and collect four today. Each situation gets very emotional and it depends, you know, how happy and how quickly we can persuade these people to hand their puppies over to us. And sometimes it can get quite fraught, for want of a better word. So, um, yeah, we'll see. Could be an interesting day. To avoid people disappearing, Deborah and Sharon turn up unannounced. Doesn't look like they're in, does it? But this, too, can have its problems. <laughs> Time is one thing they don't have. The puppies are a health risk, and they'll be back. The Ark deals with all manner of exotic animals from around the globe, anything from snakes and spiders Woo! to bugs... Look at the tail on that. ..and lion cubs and they have the expertise to deal with them all. Be surprised if you realise what's actually underneath you when you fly. Anything from hippos to lions to all sorts of weird and wonderful animals. 
Former zoo bird keeper Lawrence is checking on the African grey pet parrots which have flown in from Canada. Come on, pop up. All animals must match their paperwork. For these birds, it means reading their ankle rings. I'm trying to read his chip number. But this one is having none of it. If I can do it without stressing them too much, it makes it a lot easier. At least Lawrence has got one of them out of its cage. Gemma can't even get close. Good lad, just a big click on. It looks like G M G W A C A N to me. Good boy. Sit down there for me. Good lad. The ring number matches the paperwork. African grey parrots have been popular pets, kept for their ability to talk. Today, the sale or importation of wild-caught birds is banned in the US and European Union. Lawrence is keen that these two reach their destination safely, but there's a problem. Well, ideally, they should have more air holes around here. If anything, for instance, say these two boxes were pushed together with the fronts, there wouldn't be adequate ventilation. So we're going to have to look at that before they go out. Armed with a power tool, Lawrence sets to work with his makeshift air conditioning. Each box will be given extra air holes. In central London, Deborah and Sharon are still trying to track down the puppies brought in illegally by a pet shop. Their next target is a pug puppy called Keiko. Hi, Miss Costa. Mr. Costa, sleep. Okay, I'm Ryan Sharon Edwards. I'm from City London's Animal Health Team. Sleep. I really need to speak to him. It's, it's a puppy here. Yeah. It's quite urgent. We really need to speak puppy. to him really urgently because we're really worried about the puppy. Having gained access to the flat, they must now explain to the owner why he has to hand over his pride and joy. Um, I'm afraid there's a bit of a problem with the puppy that you bought. Um, yeah. you, went, you bought him from the pet shop and yeah, yeah. when you bought the puppy, yeah. did they tell you the puppy was born in England? Yeah, yeah, England, yeah, yeah. Okay, because he wasn't born in England. He was born in Slovakia. This is a chip reader. If I can see the puppy, I'll show you. It's an awkward situation, potentially volatile. I'm really sorry to wake you up. The man had no idea the puppy had been born in a country where rabies is present. The pet shop have told you a lie. Oh, because I have the paper yeah. there, Pedro. So the problem is this puppy, we, in um, Slovakia they have rabies. Do you understand rabies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And here in England we don't have it. I and, know, I know, I know. But he doesn't meet. He should, he's not here. His rabies vaccinations are not current. Because I have everything, the vaccination. Yeah, but not rabies. Ah. And he, this is what we're worried about. We're worried about the rabies and we're worried about your health mm. as well as the puppy. You know what happened? Because I, I, I cost for me 800 pounds. Yeah, I'm sure. You must go back to the pet shop, make big, big complaint, and go and see your, go and see your solicitor, make big complaint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay, the, you, um, you have something... Well, what we're going to do is... Um, this is the horrid part. The puppy, he has to come with me today for 21 days and have rabies vaccine and be looked at by the government vet. And in 21 days' time, he's your puppy, you have yeah, him but back. Because I could for me, look. Yeah, he's your I mean, puppy. We're not taking him away from him. You can, can I... have him back at the end of the 21 days. And there'll be no cost to you. The pet shop owner is going to pay the cost. Yeah, okay. You can visit him. It's at Heathrow Airport. At Heathrow Airport? You were an innocent victim here. I know, I know. It's not my fault. Because no, I take, it's, I not your, it's not I, your I, fault. I take, I take the shop. Yeah, absolutely. The owner is bemused, but not obstructive. I'm, I'm so sorry about this. Okay. Uh, what's the puppy's name? Uh, I put Kiko. Kiko. Kiko, come, are you going to come with me? Uh, male. Very yeah, sweet, huh? Because they're very sweet, very nice. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, no, sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> sorry, no, your fault, no, my fault. No. Where's the problem? Now you the fault the dog. 21 days you'll have 21 back. days he'll be back. And you 12 week old Keiko has already been separated from his mother. Now he must leave his new family as well. Very means not the money. The money I don't care, but the dog. <laughs> It's not long, is it? Three weeks, that's good. Yeah. It could have been worse. Six months, that would have been yeah. terrible. Okay, thank, thank you. you. No, Take no care. problem. Bye. All right. Get back Bye. to sleep. Okay. Right, thank you. <laughs> Keiko's home for the next three weeks will be a kennel. He needs to prove he's not a rabies risk before he can go home. At the Ark, Chris has just picked up a dog crate from the States, and it's huge. <laughs> It's a small horse. Its lead yeah. says it all. What is it? A great day? Cross something. It's not a great day. <laughs> this mastiff means business. He doesn't look very happy, does he? But not everything is what it seems. Do you want to know the name? Tinkerbell. Your Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell. Is that your name? <laughs> Tinkerbell. 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 Really nice. Mr. Tinkerbell to his friends has a bark worse than his bite. Go for a walk. Go for a walk. Don't bite me head off. You can go. You go on board. Come on, mate. We'll just pull you out a bit. Come on. You've got to come out at some point. It seems he's a bit shy. Perhaps he thinks his new kennel mates will laugh at his name. That's a bit closer. Here's a good boy, girl, boy thing. Come on. Less bad to the bone, more soft to the core. Out of the box. Come on. Come on. Well done. Come on. Sure. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah, boy. Okay. Well done. Big good boy. It's called Big called Tinkerbell. Probably hasn't helped your confidence, is it? Scary boy. Now you're just a big wimp. Stuart takes Mr. Tinkerbell to a kennel. He'll wait here till he gets customs Come clearance, on. then be reunited with his owner. He's a big lad, he should be like Bruce or something. Didn't you? It seems Mr. Tinkerbell prefers his travel crate. In London, Sharon is having one of the worst days of her career. I hate this job. She's just collected a third puppy, but this time the owner was deeply emotional and with good reason. You got the car key so we can get out of here. It was just awful. The, the woman has had a recent bereavement. Her husband was killed in a car crash. She's bought this puppy and it was just awful. It's one of the worst ones I've ever done. I just wanted to walk away and leave her with the puppy. You know, how do you cope? You, you have an awful sudden bereavement and then some woman turns up and takes your puppy you've just bought. I don't normally get upset, but yeah, it was upsetting. It was, I would have rather been anywhere than in that, sh in that house, having to do what I've just done. At Heathrow's Animal Reception Centre, it's feeding time for the residents. Animal health officer Stuart has defrosted mice, rats and chicks. Well, it's um, snake feeding day today, um, so all the resident snakes get fed. Um, so we've got a few here, we've got a Burmese python. Um, for some reason, we'll only eat day-old chicks, and she can be a bit funny. It's not the greatest of diet for her, day-old chicks. She should be on mice and rats, but um, I think that's what she was fed on. And the previous owner had her, so I've been here, what, 15, 15 years nearly, um, trying to get her on to other stuff, and I've just given up now, really. She just eats day-old chicks. 
Eight snakes are temporarily living at the Ark. They're used to train staff in reptile handling. Just don't bite them. There you go. Good lad. It's all about food. And basically, they just go into overdrive, and all they want is that, that little mouse. Yeah, there's on there. There you go. Well done. Didn't even think you'd strike. So what she's doing now is just manipulating the mouse to go head first, because then that's the easiest way for it to get down its mouth, really. She hasn't got any arms or fingers to help, so she uses her teeth and her jaws to manipulate it. Stuart is an expert snake handler, but even he had to start somewhere. Probably my first job here, many, many moons ago, was we had to rehydrate and inject probably about 300 royal pythons. So either you get over your fear or you don't do the job. There's one he still hasn't made friends with. This is um, a rock python. I can't stand that, to be honest. Horrible to handle. Typical rock python, nasty as anything and I literally just chuck the food in because um, I don't really want to get bitten by her. Because once she gets hold of you, I'll never get her off. She has a rat. I don't muck around with her, it goes in. She'll eat it once we've left. She'll probably strike the glass as well. She's that mean. In the loading bay, another shipment of snakes has arrived. Every year, around 27,000 reptiles fly in the hold of passenger planes, many of them snakes. These have come from the States, and they're rather special. Susie opens it carefully. It's not unknown for these slippery customers to have worked their way free. Okay, it's royal pythons, I think, or blood, possibly. If it is a blood python, I'm just going to go a little bit more carefully because they're usually a bit grumpy. Blood pythons have an aggressive reputation in the wild and they possess needle-sharp teeth. Oh, no, that's all right. Yeah, nice colour morph royals. It's a royal python with the difference. We've seen a lot of these shipments through. Um, steady. So that's not a regular colour royal python, that's a, a selectively bred colour morph. And that's quite a nice one, especially at that size. These royal pythons look very different from those in the wild. They've been especially bred in captivity for their unusual skin patterns. They breed them in quite a big way in the States and then there's quite a high demand for them over here. I'd always rather have the, uh, the original thing myself, but I can see why people are attracted to them. Colour morph snakes a big business. Collectors are known to pay up to £15,000 for the most stunning and unusual ones. This shipment is well packaged and the snakes can go on to their new homes. Deborah and Sharon are still picking up the illegal puppies sold by a London pet shop without the necessary vaccinations. This 12-week-old chihuahua is their 15th detainment, and it's not getting any easier. OK, so we're going to have to take the puppy with us, OK? At all times, he's your puppy. We're not removing him from your ownership. And I know this is really horrible, but you are just the victims here of this gentleman's scam, if you want to call it. What's her name? Uh, Lubuta. Like the shoe. Lubuta. Like... Just show you that. Uh, no, I always felt this. <laughs> They're going to love that one in the kennels. Has uh, she got a bed or something she's used to we yeah. can take for her? This yeah, that's good. As much as familiar as possible. The Chihuahua is named after designer footwear and has a handbag to match. I'm loving the bag. <laughs> she's being very supportive. It's off to the quarantine kennels. Time for the African grey parrots to catch their connecting flight to Northern Ireland. There's one last job to do before they catch the plane. Uh, 
Um, I'm just, ooh, I'm just X-raying um, the two uh, African greys that are going on a on forwarding flight. Um, all animals that leave here, uh, going on to other um, aircrafts, have to be screened. So I'm just making sure that everything's okay and they're fit for their flight. It's the same as when all your bags go through when you're walking through the terminals to get onto a plane. So we just do exactly the same with the animals just to make sure there's nothing um, in the boxes, on the boxes, in the animals um, that shouldn't be in there. And everything's fine. With the all clear, they can go on their way. Sharon and Deborah are on their last journey of the day to the quarantine kennels with their illegal puppies. 15 of the 17 dogs have now been picked up. Joining the growing number are Lubuta, the Chihuahua, and Keiko, the Pug. No, it's a bit naughty, but we didn't want to... Um, that is his blanket. That's his blanket, that's the washing machine, I think. OK, then, come on, then. That's the dogs from Lambeth now in... So we've just got two to do tomorrow. And then these people won't be seeing us again, I hope. So, yes. Great. After a rabies vaccination and 21 days in quarantine, they'll be allowed back home. After a few hours in kennels for Mr Tinkerbell, his owner arrives. Oh, I eat over the, the continental. Yeah. Tinkerbell! It's been a long separation for one dog and his man. I named him Mr. Tinkerbell because my wife wouldn't li let me name him Little Bunny Foo Foo. She said that name would be too long for him. <laughs> Mr. Tinkerbell's relocating to the UK from America, but he's not so brave in this new world. Pinky, hey. Right there, so. <laughs> there we go. Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell. Hey. He's here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you just realised who that was, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. Hey. Sits. 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 Hey. We've had him for about five years now, and he's very much the, the family, the family friend. There's just the small matter of Mr. Tinkerbell's outsized crate. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it in my house. <laughs> he's used to the steering wheel being on the other side, and this is where he would normally sit. So he doesn't understand. We're driving alongside the road here, buddy. Why don't you move over? Tinkerbell. Can you move over for me? This side. That's it, you're gonna to have to learn to bark in an English accent now. Yeah, okay. he's in defensive mode now. This is this is home. <laughs> yeah, this is his home. <laughs> Bye, the two African grey parrots made it to Northern Ireland. After three weeks quarantine, all the illegal puppies are back home. Lubuta the Chihuahua went back in his designer handbag. And Keiko the Pug had a joyful reunion with a happy owner. Hello. 